Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've had quite a few people ask me about the situation with the water in Michigan. And it's a story that's made international headlines. And Vincent passed along one version of the story, but I've seen it in several different places. And what's going on is that the company Nestle uh, is taking water out of the ground and putting it in plastic bottles and then shipping it worldwide. And people are buying it. <laughs> I'll grant you, I've bought bottled water before, but I don't drink it uh, you know, like it's going out of style or anything. So uh, from The Guardian, Nestle cannot claim bottled water is essential public service, a court has ruled. Tom Perkins wrote the story, and uh, a Michigan Court of Appeals has ruled that Nestle's Ice Mountain water brand uh, is not a essential public service or a public water supply, which is what they were arguing in court in an attempt to overrule a local board that said you can't pump more water than you're already pumping. And ironically, calling it Ice Mountain is, is one of the craziest misnomers because it's coming out of the ground in a place called Everett, Michigan, nowhere near any mountains, although I'll admit occasionally it might freeze there. And I suspect if you take this water and put it in the freezer, it might turn into ice. But Ice Mountain, like I said, is just water out of the ground near Everett, Michigan. So there you go. Uh, the ruling is a big victory for Osceola Township, which, by the way, uh, the story is datelined Detroit, but it's actually Everett, Michigan is the town. It's about 200 miles northwest of Detroit. So someplace up here, mid-Michigan, as we call it, or mid-Mitten, you might want to call it. Um, this ruling by the Court of Appeals is blocking Nestle from building a pumping station that doesn't comply with zoning laws. So the local zoning board said, guys, the, the pumping station you're proposing is not appropriate. And instead of saying, okay, let's work with you, they said, screw it, we'll see you in court. So they went to court and they lost at the appellate level. Now, Nestle has been uh, criticized for its attempts to privatize water around the country. Uh, that is, they go into an area where they can pump water to the ground and they pump out tons of it, literally, and they bottle it and they sell it. And of course, it does cause issues for the locals who also use that water. Um, so in an attempt to carry out its plans, it needs to be legally recognized as a public water source that provides an essential public service. Because if they were doing that, they could get around the little problems with the local zones, the zoning boards. Uh, one Michigan attorney who specialized in environmental law named Jim Olson uh, was not involved in this case, but he said any claim that the Swiss multinational corporation is a public water utility is ludicrous. And, and again, you know, Nestle is, in fact, Swiss. Um, and, and he said, what this lays bare is the extent to which private water marketers like Nestle and others like them go in their attempts to privatize sovereign public water, public water services, and the land and com communities they impact. Uh, the ruling was recent, and this could also inspire environmental regulators in the state of Michigan to reconsider permits that they've granted to Nestle to pump water in Michigan. The uh, case from near Everett stems from Nestle's attempt to increase its take of water from about 250 gallons a minute to 400 gallons a minute. And like I said, this is near Everett, Michigan. And I keep saying Everett, Michigan. I like to point this out because Preston Tucker, the man this car is named after, briefly spent some time in his childhood in Everett, Michigan. I kid you not. Uh, Nestle says they need to build the pump in a children's campground in Osceola Township to transport the increased water load via a pipe system that they want to use. The township a couple years ago shot these plans down based on the zoning laws. And so, like I said, Nestle, instead of saying let's work, said let's sue. The uh, trial court ruled that water is essential to life. And uh, bottling water, therefore, is an essential public service that met a demand. And they said that that overrode the township's zoning rules. And, of course, water is essential to life. But is bottled water essential to life? If it was, I'd be dead. Because I don't know when the last time I had a bottle of water was. I actually drank it from a bottle that I bought from the store. Uh, so the Court of Appeals, though, has reversed that decision. The appellate judges said that water, in fact, is essential to life. But marketing bottled water in an area where tap water is available is unessential. And let's face it, it ain't essential. The circuit court's conclusion that Nestle's commercial water bottling operation is an essential public service 
uh, is clearly erroneous, they wrote, other than in the areas with no other source of water, bottled water is not essential. The court noted that infrastructure that provides essential public services include things like electrical substations, sewage facilities, and so on. Nestle's pumping station does not fit that category. The judge has also argued with Nestle's argument that it represented a public water supply. How could that be? The water's in the ground. They're not supplying it. They said that state law unambiguously implies that public water supplies are conveyed to a site through pipes, while non-essential water is provided in bottles. (laughs) We conclude that Nestle's proposed booster pump facility is not a public water supply under the law, the court said. Osceola Township's attorney in Osceola Township is the area near Everett, told the Guardian newspaper that Nestle's bottling operation is, in fact, a commercial purpose, and the pump was prohibited by the township's zoning laws. He said Nestle could appeal, if they wanted to, to the Michigan Supreme Court, or it could attempt to build the pump elsewhere in the township. Uh, Appeals to the Michigan Supreme Court are few and far between. I've mentioned before that about every hundred appeals that are sent to them, the people ask for leave to appeal to the court. 97 of them are just dismissed out of hand, and they do accept three out of 100. And of the ones they accept, two out of three are criminal cases. So if you have a civil case like this, your odds going in are one in 100. Now, you know, there might be other things going in your favor on such a thing, including the fact that you might be a multinational, multi-billion dollar corporation, and they tend to get a little bit further in this process than people like you or me might get. But it's a tough row to hoe, as they say. In a statement of the Detroit Free Press, Nestle's natural resource manager, Arlene Anderson Vincent, said the company believes the plan we proposed met the township's site plan and special land use standards. Well, that's true. Then why did they file a lawsuit over it? Couldn't they have sat down and said, hey, what's wrong with what we're trying to do here? She said, we will evaluate our possible next steps in the legal process. Uh, In the context of the larger question, Olson said, who owns the water? In this round, the state and the public do because selling containerized water for profit is simply private, not public. And, you know, it's so many levels to this. I remember when people used to joke about, oh, who'd buy bottled water? It's like saying I'm going to buy, like, you know, compressed air or something. And I understand there's uses for that, too. But bottled water has become a huge thing. And the funniest thing, of course, is how often bottled water is literally, literally nothing more than tap water that's been put in a bottle. <laughs> There's companies that bottle water in New Jersey that just take New Jersey tap water, put it in a bottle, and sell it. But they come up with really cool-sounding names for it to make it sound like it came from someplace else. And don't get me wrong. The water that comes out of the ground in Everett, Michigan, Osceola Township, is beautiful, delicious water. But it's just water just water. And so to bottle it and then sell it, you know, it's one of those things. But I know that ever since they started pumping this water and bottling it under the brand name Nestle, uh, there's been controversy because, of course, the question is how much water can you pull out of the ground before the aquifer can't replenish itself? And I'm not going to claim to be an expert in hydrogeology or anything, Uh, But I do know that there were concerns raised about that. So that's one of the other issues going on here. But the funny part, of course, is that the company actually went to court and filed a lawsuit and actually won at one level, saying that we're providing like an essential public service, like any other municipal thing, like, you know, electricity or sewage or water. You're not providing water. In in actuality, you're doing the exact opposite. You're taking water. (laughs) <laughs> taking it someplace else and selling it. I mean, are you really literally bot- bottling the water and selling it to the locals? I mean, I suppose in a roundabout way they could make that argument, but it's it's an absurd argument. So the good news is the Court of Appeals did the right thing and struck that down. Uh, will they take that to the Michigan Supreme Court? Eh, we'll see. Like I said, the odds of that happening are pretty slim, at least as far as getting the Supreme Court to hear the case. So if they do, I'll let you know. If they don't, I see updates, I'll let you know about that too. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Snappa!